G'day guys and gal, you may have noticed the new additions of some Warhammer armory behind me. We've always had the classic Guardian Spear and the Custodes Helmet. From that one time I went balls to the walls for that video, but the Necron head and staff are new. As are the Tau Pistol and Shoulder. Pew pew pew! Pew pew! Pew 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 pew! pew. Now as much as I like spending shitloads of money on cosplay for the laughs, there is a purpose to all this, and the collection will continue to grow. Can't say what it is yet, but uh... Yeah, you guys are gonna love it. The Tau Pistol also has a lot of context for today's video, as we will be diving into all the various different weapons that the Tau can use. And my god, it's a lot of weapons! You would think that being a smaller faction, they would get a bit shafted for weapon diversity, but you would be painfully wrong, you idiot. To be fair, I genuinely thought I would need to include the Tau Battle Suits in this video to hit that absolutely moist 10 minute mark, but that just isn't the case. Battle Suits can get their own video. Male Grooming. We all know the Lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped keeps your balls smoother than a great clean one. The Manscaped undies, making Magnus the Red Tear chafing a thing of the past. And not to forget, the Ball Deodorant and Reviver, which deletes stanky dick from your life. All staple members of the Perfect Package 4. But there is another unsung hero that can and should be bought alongside them. The Shears 2.0, a 4-in-1 kit full of practical tools for everyday use. There's a nail file for when you want to, you know, stab a bee, I mean, file your nails. Nail clip is pretty self-explanatory. Grooming scissors for when you don't want to go full bold eagle down there and tweezers. An acoustic kit full of high quality essentials for any man that wants to ascend beyond their neck bearded state. So if you want to upgrade your grooming, then use my link and code MAJORKILL below for 20% off your order and free international shipping. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over each of the Tau weapons, including melee weapons, range weapons, as well as battle suit weapons. I do want to note though that the Tau are very sci-fi, like the Imperium is kinda sci-fi, but the Tau take it to a whole nother level. So some of their weapons are a bit like what the hell. I'll do my best to interpret their use for you, but at the end of the day, I'm a mongrel living on an ex-prison colony, not a blue bovine weeb. Let's get into it. <laughs> Going alphabetically, the first weapon on this list is the Experimental Air Bursting Fragmentation Projector. Sick. This weapon is kind of confusing, but the gist of it is that it fires a whole bunch of small explosives above the enemy. When it reaches its target, they explode, spraying shrapnel everywhere. Its effectiveness comes from the fact that its firing arc and range is extremely accurate due to the use of AI targeting. This means that if the enemy is behind various covers, the tower can plop these over their heads and detonate them, shredding them to pieces. It's also good at ripping through large crowds of light infantry. See, if you really think about it, the name is wildly accurate. Next up is the Burst Cannon, which uses the same technology as a lot of the other Tau weapons, except that it's basically a minigun version. Due to the fact that it's a minigun, you can attach it to pretty much anything that can carry it. Battle suits, larger drones, aircraft, and land vehicles all make wide use of the Burst Cannon. Not much else to say here, other than getting shot by this sucks. I mean, getting shot by anything sucks, but this one especially. The Burst Cannon has a heavy variant for when you really want to ruin someone's day, as well as a long barrel variant for when you want to ruin someone's day from further away. Onto the Cluster Rocket System. This weapon probably seems familiar and is fucking badass. Pretty much every sci-fi setting has its own version, and there's even versions of it in real life. Basically, it's a few dozen little rockets attached to a battle suit. The rockets are targeted to an area, usually one with a shitload of orcs or tyranids in it, before being launched and creating dozens of explosions that absolutely shit on some tits. A big thing I admire about the Tau is how accurately all their weapons are named. Something that is notable about Tau weapons is that they are always being approved upon and upgraded. Tech heresy doesn't exist within the Tau Empire, so each weapon a Tau uses has likely undergone many iterations. A good example of this is the Cyclic Ion Blaster, which when it was being developed, acted more like a high intensity laser beam, but was reworked to basically be an accurate high projectile grenade launcher, if the grenades were plasma bolts. Here, I'll make the noise for what I think this gun really sounds like to really paint the picture. This weapon is used by the battlesuits. Another battlesuit weapon is the Cyclic Ion Raker, which acts more like a light machine gun. While it has less firepower than the Burst Cannon, it's much more compact and portable. This gun, like numerous others in the Tau Empire, was able to be invented due to the Tau's alliance with the Xeno race. 
in this case the Demiurg. The Demiurg shared their ion technology with the Tau, hence allowing the Tau to dramatically increase their pew pew potential. A special unique weapon now, we have the Dawn Blade. Only one Tau uses the Dawn Blade and that is Commander Farsight. This iconic weapon started the revolution, allowing Tau to genuinely seem cool in melee. It can cut through nearly anything, and whenever its wielder kills something, the natural lifespan of his victim is transferred to the wielder. As such, Farsight is over 300 years old, and might be low-key immortal. Like, if he has killed an orc with the blade, which I'm sure he's done like a thousand times, that's a big deal. Orcs, as far as we know, are immortal and do not age in the normal sense. So by this point, Farsight's lifespan could be in the millions or billions of years old. Wild. Not every weapon the Tau have is super sci-fi. Sometimes simple is best. Hence a select few Tau are currently using an experimental EMP blaster. A battlesuit weapon that fires out EMP blasts that disables or occasionally catastrophically overloads electronics. You'd think with how common electronics are on the battlefield of 40k, this would be a much more common weapon type, but yeah, not really. A funky weapon now, we have the Equalizer. It's a bit of an ironic name, here's why. This weapon is a baton that has a disruptor field in it. As such, if you get smacked by it, it can shatter your bones and liquefy your organs. It's also exclusively used by the Tau Ethereals, who are the leaders of their race. So the supreme leaders of a race use a baton to fuck people up. Usually these are unruly subjects, with a baton that has an equal in the name. Like, equal to what? Like what am I missing here? Some Imperial weapons are so cool that the Tau have to have their own version. Hence Tau flamers and various flame weapons have been known to be put onto battle suits. Unsurprisingly, the Tau have figured out fusion, and have based a number of their deadly weapons on them. One of these weapons are the fusion blades, which are basically thick lightsabers commissioned by a Tau who is appropriately named Brightsword. As the vanilla Tau aren't big on melee, this weapon is used mostly by the Farsight Enclaves. Other fusion weapons include the Fusion Blaster, which is like an Imperial Melter Gun, the Fusion Cannon, the Fusion Cascade, the Fusion Collider, the Fusion Eradicator, and the Fusion Torch. The reason why I'm just kind of gliding over them is that they're all pretty similar, with the main difference just being shit like fire rate or range. Fusion weapons are like the high power deadly but unstable version of the classic Tau Plasma and Ion weapons. Ethereals have another unique weapon, the Honor Blade. Each Honor Blade is custom made and different. It acts like a badge of office, but overall it's not a very effective weapon. If you get into an Ethereal's face, he'll probably just equalize your balls rather than trying to cut you with a cumbersome ceremonial weapon. As I mentioned earlier, the Tau make use of ion technology to develop a number of their weapons. Whilst fusion weapons consume a lot of energy to deal devastating bursts of damage, ion technology is more efficient and focused. Ion weapons, like the Ion Rifle, can also be used by Tau Light Infantry rather than just battle suits. Whilst each ion weapon may have different impacts, rates of fire and ranges, they all run off the same idea and are comparable to the Imperium's LAS weapon technology. Next up is the missile pod. Unlike the cluster rocket system, which basically serves as a checkmate buddy if the game is who can carpet bomb the other one harder, the missile pod is more versatile. You fire one rocket at a time, hoping to drag out its use for as long as possible. It's great for taking down single armored targets, but due to its size, can only be used by battle suits and aircraft. If you are feeling a bit naughty, you can use the High Yield Missile Pod, which is the same thing, but contains significantly more rockets in it at the cost of being heavier and bulkier. The Tau aren't selfish though. They also make weapons for the alien buddies, who might be lacking the know-how or opposable thumbs. One of these weapons is the Neutron Blaster, made for the Vespids. Basically a handheld war crime, this gun fires out a dense stream of short-range radiation, which tears your atoms apart causing you to combust into flames. It's kind of like a weaponized microwave or a miniature nuke. Sometimes the Tau makes shit that is very unlike them. The Onaga Gauntlet's been a prime example. This weapon is literally a power fist for battle suits. It works the same way. Punch a bitch really hard and watch them pop. There's no special or secret science here, but as it goes against the fundamental unspoken laws of Tau combat doctrine, this weapon is rare. The Tau do have grenades, with a prominent one being the Photon Grenade, which is more or less a flashbang. It works by releasing an intense sonic wave and light burst, which disorientates whoever it hits, so it's basically like being in a mosh pit at the most demonic nightclub around. Like the fusion and ion weaponry, the Tau also employ the use of plasma weapons in the form of their pulse guns. Now it can be kinda hard to determine the difference between the three weapon types. All the Tau guns go pew pew! The way I see it though, is that fusion is bursty, powerful and short lived. Ion weaponry is like a concentrated laser beam, whilst the pulse weapons are guns that shoot out blue laser bullets. Pulse weapons are also more common for the light infantry. For example, this bad boy is a pulse pistol. 
What's up? Just take any standard issue gun from the modern era and there is probably a Tau Pulse equivalent of it. Not satisfied with the three different weapon types, the Tau have also figured out rail weapons, having the rail rifle and rail gun to show for it. The Tau rail weapons operate the same as most sci-fi settings, using magnets and shit to supercharge a projectile, then fire it at unbelievable speed. The projectile does damage, sure, but the kinetic shockwave around it acts like an entirely different weapon, shredding anything around it. I'm talking full vaporization, mate. Next up is the Smart Missile System, which sits on a Tau battlesuit's shoulders and is basically a homing rocket launcher. It's able to hone in on targets due to the fact that each rocket is actually an AI-controlled drone. The Tau are definitely going to have an AI uprising at some point if they keep kamikazing them, the bad guys. The Tau have a plethora of weapons to choose from, and I'm really keen for the Exodite to eventually drop so we can see some of them in action, even if I will need to put on my eye patch and say "R" if I want to watch it. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Battle Maze 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more Fusion Iron Pulse Plasma content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.